October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we're going to spend some time on the show talking with some breast cancer survivors about their journey with the disease. Now here in the Keys, there are many opportunities to unite as a community, honor these survivors, also raise awareness and raise money for the American Cancer Society to help put an end to the fight against breast cancer. This morning I'm going to talk with one of those survivors, Melinda Rodriguez. Yes. Melinda, thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you. It takes a lot of courage for survivors to get out in front of people and talk about their story. So I really, I have so much respect for you. Thank you. Melinda, how did you find out that you had breast cancer? Um, actually, I was, I do my self um, testing every month and make sure that anything, and I actually thought I had gotten bit by something and had a lump thought that's what it was from. Did my annual mammogram and that's when it all started. Okay, so after you thought you had this lump that was maybe from a like, trip, yeah. okay, just maybe a bite from something, you decided to go to the doctor and you got the test from him and then you received the news that you did have breast cancer. Yes, um, they, you know, they said that they didn't like what they saw, they wanted to test some more, so we scheduled for, I saw them Dr. Klicknick, the surgeon here on NQ West, and he said that he didn't think it was anything, but we would test it just to be safe. And um, so I had two, actually two biopsies done on two different spots that they had found. And um, on September 17th, he called to let me know that um, they were cancerous. And I, I know that that news had to just totally turn your life upside down, Melinda. Yes, it did. Um, I actually was, um, the company that I work for, the Florida Keys Aqueduct Authority, is a very big sponsor and, and strives for cancer. Um, we do a lot of Relay for Life, and um, they were talking about the wear your pink bra, and everybody was getting all hyped for it, and I was actually online signing up for my team when I got my phone call. Wow. Now, Melinda, did you know anyone who had gone through a journey with breast cancer or just cancer in general? Um, well, my cousin had a, a case of um, breast cancer, but nothing, she didn't have to do chemo or anything like that, and they didn't even consider that close to, you know, being related or anything. But I did have a dear friend who was diagnosed last January with lung cancer, and going through all that with her, I learned so much about cancer, um, just in general. Um, so, yeah, I started understanding a lot more what cancer can do to you and mm -hmm. to the ones you love. So you, you kind of had some background knowledge about cancer because you were there for your friend mm -hmm. when she was going through her journey with cancer. Yes, she, um, with radiation and things, that, blood work and chemo and, you know, I, I, all the terminologies that the doctors throw out that you're mm -hmm. totally blunt, dumbfounded by. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, for six months I was, six, seven months we, we did that. Okay. before I was diagnosed. Now Melinda, how did you decide to treat your breast cancer? I chose to, to have a bilateral mastectomy, which is also a double mastectomy, some people call it. Um, that was just my choice from the minute he told me I had it. I was, that's what I was gonna do. It wasn't a thought, a question. We didn't, you know, but I did start to research just to make sure I was making the right decision. Mm -hmm. And for myself, that was the best for me. Great, and then once you had that done, your cancer was gone, Melinda. Yes. But early detection, it sounds like, was really the key with you. Yeah. And you wouldn't have been able to find it if you hadn't have been doing those self-tests. Yes, those on are your very, own. very, very important. I can't mm. strive that to every woman, and even men now. Um, the rise for that is, is starting to become very high on breast cancer in men as well. Now, Melinda, did you have moments where you were just overwhelmed with fear and with nerves and just <laughs> uncertainty of what was going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> and how did you get through those moments? Um, well, like everybody, you have your breakdowns, you freak, you do all your things, but you get yourself back together. And for your family and friends that support you and you know that you have a life out there that you have to keep living for, so you just keep fighting for it. Wonderful. And how important was your support group that you had, Melinda? Oh, it was awesome. Um, my husband, my kids, my parents, my friends, my family, they were with me 100% from the minute I found out till today. Um, mm -hmm. 
I'm not completed with everything just yet. I'm still doing my reconstructive surgeries, um, which should be finished in October. Mm -hmm. um, but every step of the way, they came together to raise money for me, to help me and my family. They cook dinners for me, you know, make sure my husband had food to eat other <laughs> than um, McDonald's every day. Um, but they, they come together and they help you and they make you feel so good about what you're doing that, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, from every challenge, I think we can all, like, learn a lesson or, or take something away from it. What is the thing that you took away the most from this crazy challenge that was thrown your way? That in a minute, your life can change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but you have to be control of what happens in your life. Um, mm -hmm. You can just sit back and say, okay, I'll just do the bare minimum and go on with how you feel with it that way or choose to live your life as normal as possible and, and just keep moving forward and just know that there is other people out there that have that. Don't think that there isn't. I mean, mm -hmm. there is and you have to reach for it and you have to go online and read everybody's posts and you know sometimes it can bring you down but in the other time it can make you believe that there is hope mm -hmm. there is hope out there okay. there really is so would you say that's your advice for any women out there who might be newly diagnosed with breast cancer that there is hope and and to research yes research mm -hmm. hope strength love support you just got to know where to go and um, online is awesome to get the websites the American Cancer Society you mm -hmm. join there and they call you and they send you letters and they check up on you all the time great well Melinda it's been a pleasure talking with you and I really do thank you for sharing this story and mm -hmm. you know what something I've learned too from your story is just how important early detection really <laughs> is because yes, it is. you know it's so important for women to be constantly doing self exams because you never know no, what no. you might find all right and there's so many different types of breast cancers out there that you have to be aware of mm -hmm. and I know everybody just says oh you have breast cancer but there's so many more out there that you don't even know about and Detect, I detected one. Mine just happens to be the one of the worst ones that they could find. So me finding it early was key. It, it was <laughs> the key key to me to move forward and to to know that I have fifty plus years left in my life. Absolutely, you do have that, <laughs> Melinda. <laughs> you have a lot more life left. All right. Well, thank you again, and everybody, thank you for tuning in and joining me this morning. I will be right back here tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and then back at 8:30 a.m. Take care, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.